All right, this time let's get it right. Starting off by getting everything thrown on the ground and finding a weapon and armor. This is attempt number nine for Zero to Hero. I am boxed up and this is our little adventure that we started only about a month ago. The idea was presented and I guess I made the idea and presented it to myself and thought, you know, this is going to be something that would be fun. Um, right here, you see that I'm going through the dungeon, typically looking for like an armor rack or something, maybe a weapon rack. Um, I switched over to Rogue because the Sorcerer, like I said in the last video, was honestly just a little bit too hard for me at this time. My experience with Diablo 4 isn't the best. But I'm still enjoying the game so much. Um, as you see here, I got a longsword and I was like, oh man, maybe I'll be able to attack things now and it'll be easy, things will be smooth. But with Rogue, you need either two main hand weapons or a bow to be able to attack. And that is something that I did not account for. So this is me just running around looking for a secondary weapon. And with this rogue run, I didn't want to do what the most overpowered build is. So I'm actually looking for a bow, not two swords, none of that. I don't want to do that. I want to be the bow rogan, technically. And it's long process. I mean, sometimes this goes fast, sometimes this goes slow. I think this attempt took like... 30 minutes or something just to find a bow and you can see that I got it and I'm finally able to level up get all that stuff going and it just becomes a lot easier once you're able to attack uh yeah it becomes a lot easier when you're actually able to attack and this is just me going around let's see I start one of these little uh haunt tree things just to get the mass XP. I know that they will give me a lot of enemies to attack that will come towards me, so that's typically what I'm looking for in these early levels, just ways to get enemies to come near me without having to go through dungeons where I can potentially run into the butcher, the butcher being very, very scary. I have a clip of it that will be coming in a later episode of me trying it at around level 35. It, honestly, it threw me for a loop. I need to go around and get enough renown in each um, area to get up to nine potions. The nine potions is gonna be just a huge upgrade that's gonna make me feel a lot better and a lot safer in certain scenarios, but as you can see, I'm just running through, getting all these, all this XP, doing all the little things that I can, trying to avoid other players because this is a solo run. I don't want to, I want to avoid everything that is to do with other people. And as you can see in the skill point tree, I have three left over, and that's just because of the skill point system that I have in place at level 10 I'll be able to go down to two skill points available and level 20 I'll be able to go down to one skill point available all obviously that'll all change once I get more renown in different areas and once I hit level 50 all of my available skill points will be in my hands able to use which is the main goal and then when paragon points come along that will be discussed on the whole situation again. It's basically the same thing, just not being able to use certain amount until 60, 70, 80, and so on. I'll be able to make these videos a lot more consistently now because uh, I had a situation come up at work where I have recently lost the tip of my finger. So on my left hand index finger, I have about 50% of the last knuckle there. Um, how it happened was there is a, a, what I do is I bend aluminum pieces and try to get them to the degree that somebody wants it to. This person wanted a 90 degree bend in a square. 
So I was getting it all bent up and me and my buddies were wondering, you know, is it going to bend right? Because it's such a small piece that I'm working with and we were just using one of the pieces as a sample. I get to the last bend, it bends it up over just a little bit past 90 degrees. So I go in, I'm telling myself I'm going to tap it down with uh, the manual function, but uh, I guess I had forgotten to switch it back to the manual function from the auto function. So when I hit clamp, I was ready to go. I tapped it again because it's like, oh, I just want to tap it just a little bit. I knew it was those two little taps was going to tap it in there, right? But as soon as it stopped, didn't stop clamping at the, uh, when I was on auto, I realized that, oh, I need to get my hand out of here quick. Otherwise I'm going to lose the entire knuckle. Thankfully I was able to get my finger halfway out before it fully clamped down. And then from that point, I ripped my finger out of there and my tip of my finger is still stuck between two pieces of metal. So that's always a fun time. We rushed to the hospital afterwards and they said that, you know, I'm not going to get my fingertip back, but I am going to, you know, just be in a little bit of pain. I won't be at work for a little bit, but I guess they didn't really say that I won't be at work, but I'm taking some time off, obviously, to deal with the loss of my fingertip. Not typically something that you just happens to everybody on the daily basis. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anybody to lose the tip of their finger after this experience. I mean, I have a decent pain tolerance, so I can only imagine what it'd feel like to uh, not have that level of pain tolerance and lose that little tip of finger in the way that I did. It was, I could imagine, extremely painful, but as I keep telling people, my inner arm tattoo didn't even, um, my inner arm tattoo hurt more than this experience, but there was a lot of shock value and adrenaline going into losing the tip of my finger. So I can only assume that it was about the same pain level, but yeah, so that's a fun experience. And what I've been dealing with for the past couple of days, here we are uh, going through this dungeon, just getting some levels, trying to cruise through, get to the higher end game. And this is probably my favorite shrine out there is the artillery shrine. I just love how it sends arrows straight into everything. And it just, it makes it feel like you're doing a lot more damage than you're actually doing. But yeah, that's a uh, that's little story time for me. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the new start to Zero to Hero on the Rogue Edition. I'm um, still going to be going through Episode 3. I might change it up a little bit, and once I get different classes and finish different classes, I might sort it out to be different, like Zero to Hero by class, Zero to Hero Barbarian, and all that stuff, just so it's nice and easy for people that want to see a specific class going through all this and seeing you know, the the journey and maybe I'll add different types of memes for, you know, different characters because the way that I like to play Barbarian is using last blow and just one-shotting everything. It, 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 it's mentally fun for me, even though it's like really basic and not your whirlwind. I think whirlwind sucks. But obviously, it's probably pretty good. And yeah, as you can see there, there was a nice little grab that kind of got me a little scared. And remembering that anything that grabs you is vastly scary. And everything is. Everything has a grab or a stun, and you do not want to be grabbed or stunned. Going through, just getting back on my skill points, I was discussing with somebody else about what we should do or what I should do with my skills and basically the concept of this is pushing enemies back into 
just not being able to get close. You know, that's where you have problems. When enemies get close, that's when you start getting damage dealt to you. So the more that I can keep enemies away, the easier it is going to it's going to be to not take damage obviously with the slicers there they can go invisible and kind of ruin my day if i'm not paying attention and all dog pile on me and right now i'm just going through and doing the leveling tutorial that i can't remember who put it out there but i'll definitely put it down in the description so anyone else trying to do this or wanting to do this and get levels quick will have an idea of what it is that I'm doing. But basically, we're going to start down here, go back to Kiavashad, and then go up over to, I want to say, Core Dragon Barracks. And then from there, we just do the other five uh, dungeons on the north side of Kiavashad, leading into the northwestern side of Kiavashad. Obviously, doing any of the events on the way, just to get all the XP that you can. And I don't particularly like this uh, event.